Central School, and this is our aquaponic system. Basically, what I did is I got online and we were trying to raise fish here at school for a number of years. This year, when I was online, I found a neat system from Mary Holland from Australia about aquaponics and, and aquaculture, where it combines fish growing with plants using bell siphons and just a general flow through system. After some trials and error this year with the students, here is the system that we have perfected. At first we have a, a little tank, $10, that cost me on a local flea market. I had to seal it up to um, make it work, but it's just a small 70 gallon tank and I think it's going to fit just well with it. Then I have two grow beds, which were uh, clarifiers from our previous trials over the years that I thought would work really nice for the system and we have the bell siphons here. It's a really simple system and it takes one pump that runs everything and it's on like an ebb and flow system. And as you can see with our small tank we have a continual flow of water. It's only being operated by one little pump that I have down into the bottom that sends the water up through a simple garden hose all the way into the back and then it will come back into, into the grow bed. Back here you can see where it comes out to a T and then I have it branching off with two little flow valves here. Each flow valve can dictate how much water I want to put through the beds at one time. If we adjust the water down so it's a really low flow, then what I've found is the siphon will continue to siphon. If you get too much flow, it will cycle, but the cycles in between will be a lot shorter. What we're looking for is a maximum flow that will give us about 10 to 15 minutes of dry time in the bed. But that means the water level in the bed will come up, get to the root system, all of a sudden the siphon will kick in and then drains the water out of the system and while it's draining out, it's pulling air back down through this number two stone. Then I have a return line for whatever water we don't use through the system. I have it so it returns back to the tank up to where she's letting it oxygen continually into the tank where the fish is. Okay, here's where I made my adjustments other than I went online and looked up a lot, a lot of bell systems. And if you do that, they have the bell system right in the grow bed itself, right inside of the container. With this one here, I've decided to try to put an external on the outside, which will take and allow me so that I can take it off like that and let the water out of it and then we can transport this to any school fair or a demonstration or any county or local fair that we may want to and then when we're there we can put it back in. Part of the, the bell siphon is very simple. I have a T with a coupling through it and everything is through and then we I've just taken a half inch pipe and have ran it all the way through to the end. To do that we had to take a Forstner bit and drill out this hole and drill out the stop in our coupling <clears throat> a little more, but that allows for the T to fit on here. Everything's right up through, and then you take another standard piece of pipe and a cap, <clears throat> and that's all there is to these little bell siphons. What happens is when we put it on, I just take and slip it on, there's no gluing involved, and if you watch what's going on, you can see the water as it's filling, it's coming up through into the T level. And at this point, when the water starts to overflow here, that's the level that it is in the whole grow bed. We need a little more height to it, so I've added the um, PVC pipe onto it. And then as we watch, the water will continually flow up through the grow bed and come up to the top of that. And then all we do, I put this little top onto it, and what I found is that there is just enough difference between the ridge inside of it and the top of the cap that once that's placed on, all the air sucks out of here and then you get your siphon flow. And what's really cool is, is you want to take, and what we've found and everybody will also recommend, is that you keep enough rocks above your water level so that they stay dry. So that then no algae will grow through your grow bed. And also I found it's a neat, simple way because we have no weeds involved into it 
and you can plant any kind of plants that you want into it. In theory, what happens is all the fish waste gets pumped up, goes through the grow beds, and bacteria growing on the rocks and the plants themselves will pull some of that um, fish waste off of it and purify the water. Eventually, as it goes on, you want to throw in some red worms and stuff, and then their excretion and stuff will also make even a hotter fertilizer that will kind of will grow things. We're going to pull away some rocks here so we can just see the water. It's almost coming up to the level, and you can see what level of, of water we have there. It's going to take just a few more minutes. Um, so I just think it's a very simple system, very easily. They have two beds. These can be uh, 55 gallon barrels cut in half, laid out flat with the external siphon on the outside of it. It keeps it nice and clean, everything to the inside. We can keep the grow beds back off of the tank. Normally some people have them so they sit right over top of the tank and anything will drip down into them. And if I want to take this one around to set up at different displays, I don't have to worry about jamming the pipe and jamming the bulkhead fittings on those that are in it that way. Um, basically, the system's been up and running for about three or four days now. I've got some strawberry plants we just threw into it. Um, one of the things that we do add to them is uh, a seaweed. We put a couple capfuls of this in while we're waiting for the water to come up. I'll just take and stick one in, put two caps in for now. In a few more days, I'll come back and do a little bit more. And what that does, it adds a lot of extra micronutrients for the plants to help get it started. Um, I'm going to go out and try to find some organic uh, fertilizer just to throw into it for a while to get the plants going before I introduce my fish in here in about three weeks. Um, the water is continually coming up. One of the problems I have found is, is that uh, on our standpipes, if they sit too close to the outside stand, you want to try to get it in the middle. If it's over on the outside like that, sometimes we have a problem of it running through all the time. So in this instance, we had to make an adjustment. I just used a small piece of steel wool. Give me some clearance off to the side like that. And then that will help us flow. On this particular bed that I have, it slopes off at the bottom. So you want to try to keep your pipes as straight as you can. And that's why I have the uh, inch and a half to two inch reducing coupling there and it works out really well just on it. If you had a flat front on your grow bed you wouldn't need that. You could just slip the T right on to it. Our water is coming up. We're almost within an inch at the top and then pretty soon it should be coming through the rocks. Maybe it's down a little further. But what I would suggest doing is to fill it all up to the level of the water that you wanted first. Check your water level with your standpipe, get an idea where you want to cut that off at, and then come back through and add the rocks into it. And you can see here comes the water up through, and you want to try to plant, the, plant your plants when your water levels are high, all the way up to the top, so you know that you do get the roots down into, into the system. And I did, I did plant it down, the roots are into the water, we added some extra rocks to the top of it so that it here creates a nice dry barrier so no algae will grow. And if you come over, swing over here, you can see just about where the standpipe is filled right up to the top. And pretty soon that will be running over. Without the cap on it, it's like a gravity flow system. Water is just going to come up over and it's going to run out to its lowest point and go all over and go all over. Basically what we're looking for is a 10 minute to 15 minute refill time. I know I'm running a little low. I'm running probably in the six to eight minute refill time. But as long as I can get the flow, I can get the oxygen going there, that I know that'll work. Now that the water's on there, and as you can see it overflowing, to create the siphon, you want to put the cap on. And what that cap will do, as you can see at the bottom, as soon as I put the cap on, 
it takes all of the air out of the air out of it and it creates a big siphon and I have a flow that's three to four times more than what it is coming into the inside. The brown stuff that came through first, that was the uh, seaweed extract and that's where it keeps it growing. And I just put a little bit of a, we have a quick tube just to make sure that I know that that's going to stay correct. So there, there is one, you know, we had a couple extra thoughts here that on the advantage of uh, an external system like this, I can actually take this grow bed and stick it three, four, or five feet away, or say in a small tank, I wanted to put another grow bed off to the side. All you have to do is come in with a piece of pipe, and I can put a longer, a foot or two foot length of pipe in, so there's anything that'll reach this tank. So if we were looking at putting, well, there it goes, there it is, just starting to trickle now. You can see the air bubbles coming through. That's the air coming out of the cap. And once all the air is out of the top of this, it'll come right on to a full siphon. And then that's when, and there it is. And it'll be draining. Now it's pulling down, it's draining down the, the grow bed. And air is going back in through the rocks, getting pulled into it, and into the plant roots. And on that kind of a cycle, back and forth, it works really well. So I think these external, um, external siphons has a lot of potential with say you had a larger tank a 325 gallon tank in a large greenhouse and but you wanted to put some beds in a full line you didn't want to have to concentrate them around um, around the tank you know you can just extend them out to whatever you wanted to do some of the future things we're going to do with the system I've got to put up like a black screen or a black tarp over top of the, uh, the bed over top of the tank so that it will stay algae free for any fish that I enter into. So that's our system. I think it's, a, it's very simple to put together. It's different than what some of the other systems are on the internet, but it has all the components to it. Uh -huh.